throughout our reading this week, you, you may have noticed how comparison or the theme of comparison has really, really uh, stood out, at least with regards to the kings. See, all of these kings that came after David were all compared to him. They were either bad, bad kings, or good kings. Some kings were said they followed after David, they followed after the Lord just like David their father had. And others said they did what uh, said what they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow after the Lord. Rather, they they followed after other gods and they broke down altars and so many other things. See, comparison is really rampant throughout all of these readings. All these kings, all these rulers that are supposed to be following after God are really being compared to David. Because David, at least then, was the standard. He was the standard of what it meant to be a king. A king that followed after God's own heart. Now we know that David wasn't perfect. We know that. The story of David and Bathsheba really illustrates that. He was not a perfect king, and that's not what, what God is getting after here. It's just that David constantly sought after God and sought to serve him and walk in his ways in everything. So what do we think about today? Who are we compared to? Or maybe who do we compare ourselves to? So often we think of comparison as the thief of joy. We can look at our own lives and compare it to those around us. We can want something that we don't have, what our neighbor has perhaps. We can compare ourselves to, well, our siblings, our, our relatives, because they're better off or they're working a better job or they're healthier. And often that comparison steals the joy out of our lives and makes us bitter. Or maybe you've compared somebody else. You've, in your own mind, have compared somebody to someone else and you've compared two people and one just doesn't meet the standards that you expected. Maybe one just doesn't live up to what you thought they should be. Or what you anticipated them being. See, and maybe that, that that comparison steals the joy out of any sort of event or or thing that you might be doing with them because you can't get out of your mind what you think they should be. You see, this comparison really is the thief of joy. Now, how does comparison, how are we compared, I should say? How are we compared? You see, when God looks at us, so often we think that we're compared based on everybody else. And there is some truth to that. We're compared based on our sins, and we, we, we know that we are sinful. And yet when we turn to God in repentance and trust Him in faith that what Jesus has done, we're forgiven. We are forgiven. And when God looks at us because of what Jesus has done, well, He compares us to Jesus. See, Jesus' work allows us to be compared to him. And because we've been clothed in his righteousness, we've been washed clean through our baptism, we've been, we, we put our faith, hope, and trust in him, our comparison is Jesus. And it's because of Jesus that we are compared <laughs> with all perfection, with, with goodness. We are, we are, how do I say this? Our comparison is great. God looks at us and sees Jesus. And he sees what the, the work that Jesus has done in and through the cross for each and every one of us. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, when, for sending your Son to suffer and die for us and three days be raised from the dead. Help us to look to you for our comparison to look to you, to order our lives according to what you have set it forth, that we may seek joy, that we may see the joy that you have set before us, and trust 
trust in you, knowing that when you see Jesus, see us, you see Jesus and his all, all atoning, all encompassing work, saving work of his, of his death on the cross and his rising again. Help us to see that in one another as we go out into this world and serve those around us. In your name we pray. Amen.